The Patient Safety Screener 3, also known as the PSS-3, can help nurses in acute care settings like emergency departments and inpatient medical units to detect patients at risk of suicide and help them access the support they need. Detecting suicide risk in patients before the patient acts is an essential component of prevention. Up to 1 in 5 people who die by suicide visited an ED in the four weeks prior to their death. For ED patients who go on to die by suicide, often the presenting complaint is not suicide-related. Those who die by suicide are actually more likely to have presented in the ED with a non-psychiatric complaint than a psychiatric complaint. Screening is a routine part of clinical care, and universal screening for suicide risk is a powerful way to detect those who might otherwise go on to die by suicide. The Patient Safety Screener 3, or PSS-3, is a suicide risk screening tool for use in acute care settings. It is intended to be administered to all patients by a nurse during triage or during the primary nursing assessment. It has been validated specifically for patients aged 18 and older and has been used in practice with patients aged 12 and older. This tool was designed to be short, simple, and easy to integrate into your existing patient protocols. This video will walk you through how to use the PSS-3 screening tool to identify patients at risk and outline some resources for implementing suicide care management plans for patients who screen positive in your setting. A link to the SPRC website with a detailed list of all the resources mentioned during this presentation will pop up at the end of the video. The key elements of the PSS-3 screener are a brief introductory script and three questions. There is also one follow-up question depending on the patient's response to question three. This tool is designed to identify patients with suicide risk and should be used with all patients, regardless of their chief complaint, not just patients who are presenting with a psychiatric complaint or current suicidality. To be implemented with fidelity, all three questions on the PSS-3 must be asked, and each question on the screener needs to be asked exactly as it is worded and appears on the screening tool. Rephrasing these questions can interfere with proper screening. If a patient cannot respond appropriately to any question, it is important that this is documented as unable to complete in the patient record, instead of documenting it as a no. Now let's look at each element in the PSS-3 tool separately so you can see how the screener helps you better identify suicidal risk in your patients. It is important to introduce the screening in a way that helps the patient to understand its purpose and to normalize questions that might otherwise seem intrusive. A nurse might introduce it in the following way. Now I'm going to ask you some questions that we ask everyone treated here, no matter what problem they're here for. It is part of the hospital's policy and helps us to make sure we are not missing anything important. This introduction helps to explain that because this screening is performed with all patients, no one patient is being singled out. Question 1. Over the past two weeks, have you felt down, depressed, or hopeless? This first question asks the patient about depression before easing into the subsequent questions that ask directly about suicidality. Depression is a well-established and common clinical risk factor for suicide. Signs of depression, such as hopelessness, are indicators that warrant further assessment and attention. Even if a patient is depressed, this does not necessarily mean they are suicidal, so question 2 helps determine whether a patient has been having thoughts about killing themselves. Suicidal thoughts are the precursor to suicidal behavior since suicide does not occur without first having the idea or thought of wanting to end one's life. It is important to ask this question exactly as it is worded here. Over the past two weeks, have you had thoughts of killing yourself? Although killing may seem harsh and difficult to say, it is important to ask it like this to find out if the person has active suicidal ideation, not passive or non-suicidal ideation. This sensitive question becomes easier to ask over time. Sometimes, clinicians become concerned that asking patients if they are thinking about suicide will give them the idea of suicide and increase their risk. Several trials have shown that this is not the case. For many patients at risk of suicide, it is a relief to be asked directly and non-judgmentally about suicide. Question 3. In your lifetime, have you ever attempted to kill yourself? Question 3 asks about the patient's lifetime history of suicide attempt, which is one of the most consistent predictors of future suicidal behavior. Again, this question should be asked exactly as it is worded here. Question 3a is only asked if the response to question 3 is yes. The timing of a patient's most recent attempt helps to more accurately determine if a patient is at acute risk. In the acute care setting, we consider a suicide attempt in the past six months to be recent and clinically relevant. Here are some tips that are essential to keep in mind when implementing the PSS-3 screener. Summarize or reflect what you've heard from the patient to demonstrate interest in their answers. Use encouraging verbal responses like, uh-huh, okay, 
or it seems like you've been going through a lot. Nonverbal behavior and body language are as important as verbal responses. Small actions like nodding and an attentive, compassionate expression can make a big difference in the patient's comfort and willingness to disclose. Sitting with the patient if possible and speaking slowly will also increase a patient's willingness to answer accurately. Scoring the screening is quick. A yes to any of the items circled in red, depression, active ideation, or recent attempt, is considered a positive screen. If a patient screens positive, the next step is to apply the practices that are consistent with the patient suicide care management plans in your setting. These patient management plans will be driven by the acuity of the patient. For example, a yes to question one may require less intensive intervention than a yes to a suicide attempt in the past 24 hours. As part of your medical settings procedures, there should be patient suicide care management plans in place. These care management plans will help the team to define the level of a patient's risk in more detail and determine the most appropriate next steps. Management plans might include a formal suicide risk assessment, safety precautions, the safety planning intervention, and or a referral to a behavioral health specialist. This slide shows an example of one clinic's patient suicide care management plan to help determine appropriate interventions based on patient risk level following a positive screening. There are many resources linked at the end of this video that can provide guidance on what to do when a patient screens positive. Remember, when using the PSS-3 screener, ask all screening questions of every patient, regardless of their presenting complaint or clinical appearance. Follow the exact wording of each question. Do not skip or reword questions. Ask questions in a compassionate manner and show interest in the patient's answers. Document the results of the PSS-3 screening and the patient health record. If a patient screens positive, apply the patient practices that are consistent with the suicide care management plans in your clinical setting. Screening alone without appropriate intervention is not an effective way of preventing suicide. Visit the Suicide Prevention Resource Center's website at www.sprc.org slash micro dash learnings slash patient safety screener to view a list of all the resources mentioned in this presentation, or click on the small information icon on the upper right-hand corner of this video to open a link to these resources on our website.